I'm a little bit confused because Samsung is usually the king of innovation, but this phone looks exactly like the S22 Ultra. However, you should not judge a book, or in this case, a phone, by its cover. The inside, as well as the camera, have major league improvements compared to the previous model, but the real question is, are they enough to match up against the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the Google Pixel 7 Pro? It's time to find out if the Galaxy S23 Ultra has the potential to be the best camera phone of all time, with the help of its brand new 200 megapixel sensor, as well as a special chipset called Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy. Let the facts speak. Let's start off with checking color accuracy to the best of our ability. All of the cameras have no issues with focus. They nail the white balance on the head, and they're also able to properly manage HDR. The pixel, as usual, is slightly darker, but this shouldn't pose any problems in the specific comparison as the weather was quite sunny. Three points across the board as we check out photo number two. The Reichstag, which houses the lower house of Germany's parliament, is a very historical and beautiful building. And with all historical buildings, I tend to focus on the architecture and ingrained patterns. Don't get me wrong, they all look great from far away, but phones of this caliber are expected to show up in every regard. The iPhone's slightly darker shadows are the reason that there are less details compared to the Galaxy, but even lesser details compared to the Pixel, which is the phone that often takes the photos with the most detail. Now, this is not always a good thing as the photos can be overbearing in dark scenery, but it almost always works out when the surroundings are bright. The Pixel takes this one with the Galaxy coming in second as the next photo is an interesting game of software. There was a slight amount of sunlight hitting the roof of the building and you can see that on Samsung and Apple's side. Google though chose to somewhat remove that and that's reflected in the color of the sky. I prefer the other two for this image as they look slightly more natural. Number 4 is my favorite for this video, obviously because it's a photo of me. What I'm gonna focus on in this image is something that we're going to make a separate video on, so listen carefully. For phone nerds, it's no mystery that Google puts a lot of effort into perfecting skin tone and this has been mentioned by Marquez Brownlee in one of his latest videos. We don't have a shot from a professional camera for you, but I can vouch that in real life I look like how I look on the photo on the left. The S23 Ultra and the 14 Pro both did fine, but the color accuracy and detail on the Pixel is just something else. An image of the Berlin TV Tower does have me wondering though, do you guys like the subtle natural tones of the Pixel and the iPhone, or is your preference the saturated and lively colors of the Galaxy? I personally like them all, and the tower being less visible in Samsung's photo doesn't take away the appeal of the photo for me, so three points to each brand. Here's a bike, a green bike. They're all over the city and some of them look prettier than others. Samsung's signature warmer tones can be seen when we check out the ground in front of the bicycle, but I must admit that I like these photos way more than the S22 Exynos series as the high saturation and contrast seems to be under control. Maybe I spoke too soon. Or maybe I didn't because the photo was still nice. I just have preferred that the tree and the grass didn't look too different from the original scene, so the Pixel and the iPhone will be tied for first place here. The last one is a close-up of the Brandenburg Gate, and it's meant to show you that when you're close up to a monument, statue, or whatever you want to take a photo of, these phones are beasts. Good dynamic range, good detail, accurate colors, so basically no issues whatsoever. It was really hard to find problems with these cameras because they're just really good. I definitely remember that the S22 Ultra didn't perform this well when it first came out, so props to Samsung for the improvements. We've also been improving our content over the months, so if you haven't already, you could like and subscribe to help us reach our goals. The Google Pixel 7 Pro is the winner of the photo category with 22 points, with the Apple iPhone 14 Pro taking second place with 21. The Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra took home 20 points, and I think this is impressive considering this phone has no updates whatsoever. That was a roller coaster, and it's always nice to see the Pixel solve its issues with overprocessing when there's enough sunlight to go around. Can it keep up in ultra wide though? It looks like it's a good start with both Google and Apple going strong, but you'll see a slight blur around my face on Samsung's side, which is unfortunate. The second photo looks pretty similar until you notice the Pixel preserving details in the shadows better than the other two, so it will take the first place spot as the Galaxy and the iPhone are tied for second. 
The umbrella has come out in the next photo as we wanted some color. The shadow management is the same here, but not to the degree of the previous photo, so a tie for first is in order. Photo number four is the pose of a refined gentleman. I find it amusing how the one in the middle is often visibly different, as I guess the S in the S23 stands for saturation. Even though they all look good, my beard is almost an orange color on the galaxy, and this is also reflected upon my skin tone, so only one point on this one. The last ultra wide is an interesting one because as soon as you pay attention to the details once again, you'll see that the Galaxy S23 Ultra is lacking a little and the iPhone 14 Pro is slightly too sharp. The Pixel is a balance between the two, taking the three points. With another solid performance, the Pixel 7 Pro takes ultra wide with 15 points. The iPhone 14 Pro is second with 13 and the Galaxy S23 Ultra is third with nine points. With that being said, it's time to see if there's a difference in portrait mode compared to the S22 series as Samsung has always performed well in this area. Normally, I'd say that the Pixel did a good job in the first photo. The only issue is, the other two are generally so good in this area that I have to focus on small details, such as the outline of my hood and the area right above my beanie. It's still an overall good photo for Google standards though, but Samsung and Apple will come in tied for first. I'd like to explain to you something that I see in the next photo. The S22 Ultra does the exact same thing in which it leaves the photo as it is, while iPhones generally prefer to try balancing the shadows. I also like how the iPhone slightly blurred out my hand and arm, which means that it understands depth of field and is able to apply this knowledge to the photo, giving it three points. The Galaxy takes second place because the edge detection is slightly better than what the Pixel has to offer. Image number three is where you see the iPhone starting to widen the gap as my skin tone and features just look more natural than the other two. I'd still pick the Galaxy over the Pixel here because the latter is a tad too dark and the shape of my head is slightly warped. Number four, Samsung actually makes it to the top on this one as Apple's software messed up my hair. The same goes for Google, but Apple's photo is overall more pleasing, giving it the second place spot. Next up, thumbs up. The S23 Ultra and the 14 Pro are tied in this one, both with slight inconsistencies, but nothing to lower the overall quality of the photo. The Pixel struggles slightly around my jacket and beanie, but I will say this, the photos are way better than what the Pixel 6 Pro could do. Number six, this is a really nice photo and I'm willing to forgive the slight error on Samsung's part because the angle is ever so slightly different. Three points for each. Last photo was funny because if you check the small red Nike sticker on the side of my beanie, the only one that manages to comprehend and keep it is the iPhone. Keeping me bright is more important than showing the background in the photo, so Samsung takes second place. There's also an edge detection error over my left hand on the Pixel, so it was an easy decision in the end. Speaking of the end, the iPhone is still the king of portrait. However, I do see that the S23 Ultra has improved. I had problems with face and body warping issues on the S22 Ultra Exynos, and I honestly didn't really see that here. Google's photos are top notch, but their portrait mode software is not, and we'll have to see how much they can improve with the Pixel 8. Now it's time for videos. The first video is to see how the cameras work when the sun is in view. Samsung and Apple definitely control the flare better, as you can see the details on the bridge more clearly, leaving them tied for first. I'd like to pause the second video at the beginning to enjoy the quality and also for all of you to notice how the ground is sharp and in focus on the S23 Ultra Snapdragon, which is a blessing for us. Check out our S22 Ultra Exynos comparisons if you want to know what I mean. Anyway, even though all three look really good, the video of Samsung's flagship turns dark when the view changes, most likely due to HDR software, which is an inconsistency that should be solved in the future. First place goes to the iPhone and the Pixel. The last video was a great example of why the iPhone takes the best videos. Not sure if I need to say anything here, but notice how everything in the frame is clear and sharp. The Galaxy is too dark and the Pixel for some reason has slight jitters and less detail on the ground, so they'll be tied for second. Who's this guy in ultra wide video? <laughs> oh, it's Casper. Very close one between Samsung and Apple and Google loses out due to the blue tone of the sky affecting the general complexion of the video, which is why it will take third place while the other two are tied for first. When it comes to 8K though, it's a mode that Google doesn't feel necessary to include in their phones, so no points here. Apple doesn't have it either, so I guess they feel the same way as Google. Samsung though, has done something amazing. This is by far the best 8K I have seen out of all the phones we have tested, as it's not cropped in, it's stabilized, and the objects in the distance are not blurred, 
Four out of four points here for Samsung, very well done. I'm honestly shocked. It's the first time I'm ever gonna say something like this, but if I had this phone, I would consistently record an 8K rather than 4K. This is usually impossible because 8K was kind of an experimental feature until now. Samsung takes the video category with 13 points as the iPhone gets 12. Google is third place with seven. As a side note, if 4K is enough for you, then the iPhone is still going to be the best choice. So the zoom category is next in line and I can see the S23 Ultra rubbing its hands together. Here are the optical zooms of these phones side by side and you'll see the 10 times periscope lens of Samsung later on in the video. I must say the snow on top of the roof looks really cool, but we're going to be aiming for the clock on the church. It's interesting to see how the five times zoom of the iPhone is way better than the one on the Galaxy, but obviously 10 times will give us a different story. Google is still ahead of Apple with their super res zoom technology, allowing their digitally cropped images to be higher quality than most. The rest is going to be fairly elementary as 20 times, 30 times, and of course, 100 times zoom will all go the way of Samsung. Google does take second place with a decent zoom feature, and Apple takes third as we arrive at stabilization with a big surprise. 4K regular stabilization is pretty premium across all phones, no surprises here. So, what is the big surprise? The S23 Ultra can now shoot at 2.5K resolution while Super Stable is turned on instead of 1080p. Unfortunately, the stabilization quality is not as good as what the iPhone 14 Pro gives us with their 2.8K resolution. Google's 1080p active stabilization is really good in performance, so they'll share second place with Samsung. What's next? The little camera in the front that people tend to forget about. While they all look really good, I have to point out that it seems that the Galaxy S23 Ultra has an incredible front camera. Camera. Notice how its photo is completely sharp with very accurate colors. This in turn will grant it three points. The same goes for the second photo. Impeccable details will give it another three points as the iPhone 14 Pro is a bit too bright and my face in the Pixel 7 Pro's photo is a little smooth out. The same is true for the first portrait selfie, but the difference here is that I prefer Google to Apple when it comes to skin tone. The last portrait photo is a tie between the Pixel and the Galaxy with slight errors around my hair as the iPhone interestingly has a more serious issue. But if one thing doesn't change, it's the 4K video quality of the iPhone. Even in the front camera, it slightly surpasses the Galaxy and the Pixel, both in terms of clarity and sharpness, so I have no qualms about giving them a three points for their front camera video performance as the other two are tied with two points each. What is up guys? Um, you definitely know what this is. This is going to be one of, if not the best camera comparison we've had. And it's going to be between the top three phones currently in the West. We are going to be looking at the Google Pixel 7 Pro, which keeps improving day by day. And in the middle is the newest, finally released, the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. And as we've mentioned before, it's come complete with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip. And over here is we have the phone that is ever so consistent in every single comparison that we've ever done. It's the iPhone 14 Pro. The sound of the S23 is really muffled, but the background noise is completely gone. I'm curious if the phone does it to block out every little sound except my voice, but we'll have to give this another try indoors. So as I said, this is indoors testing. Obviously this is a lot easier on the phones as you don't really have background noise and nothing cuts into the audio at all. And here's the indoor sound of the iPhone 14 Pro. I'm pretty sure it's gonna go quite well, at least way easier than how it was outdoors. And the big surprise, this is the Galaxy S23 Ultra Snapdragon Global version. I hope that this will work out a lot better than what I experienced outdoors. Well, we have now seen that there are no problems indoors. Even though it's a cool effort by Samsung to completely block out the wind, it's not really usable this way. Google, Apple, and Samsung will be the final standings for audio, and we have a small surprise for you for the slow motion category. While we were shooting footage, we came across this really cool guy who's apparently a professional speedrunner and stuntman. His name is Waldi Müller, and he does some insane stuff, which you can see on his Instagram. He let us film him for our slow motion footage, and I just sat there and watched with my mouth open at just how high and far this guy can jump. Really impressive stuff. I have to make up for my lack of jumping skills by showing you some running skills and the S23 Ultra captures this the best with a 960 FPS slow motion feature in 1080p and upgrade to the 720p of the S22 Ultra. The 7 Pro and the 14 Pro are tied for second, both with the same values and quality for slow motion. Macro on the other hand is pretty close between these three devices. It has historically 
typically been like this, with varying results between different objects. They will be tied, but stay tuned for an upgraded macro test that we will implement very soon. As for autofocus, premium technology gives you premium results. No lags, problems or issues whatsoever, as all three phones were quick to snap onto my face and body, even with fast movement, which leaves us with the night category. I heard that Samsung made a ton of improvements here, so let's check it out. While it looks like the iPhone has the details nailed down, the photo isn't really usable due to the really warm white balance as well as the light of the church being blown out. Samsung has done a better job with this, so they'll take the 3 points as Google takes 2. Next up, Apple is my favorite here as the photo looks really natural with a dim down background and a bright subject. Samsung looks better than Google at first glance, but unfortunately, the color of the snow is a bit off along with the color of the bike on Google's side, so I tie for second place. Third photo is nice all around, slight differences here and there, but I'd say none of them messed up or anything, so let's check out photo number 4. The church from a different angle, and the S23 Ultra is looking pretty consistent with the dimming of the lights. If the iPhone could have managed this, it would have taken first, but alas, it will get second place after the Galaxy with Google not making the cut. Last white photo looks nice overall, and I have no complaints, so strike up another 3 points for each as ultra wide photos are next. Well. None of these look particularly good, but comparing them directly, I'd say Samsung is slightly better. Google takes second because even though it's not sharp enough, the iPhone has way more blur, especially around the trees. The second photo is another win for the S23 Ultra, as the iPhone couldn't separate the dark sky and the dark roof of the building in the back. It will still take second place because the bikes on the Pixels photo are a little blurry. Last ultra wide photo was taken in a completely dark setting with almost no light. The Galaxy comes out on top once again as the Pixel is a close second, with the iPhone continuing to have blur issues. These issues won't last though as Apple is just a king of video. The footage is clear with barely any noise, and the same can't be said for the other two. The iPhone takes first place as the Galaxy takes second because the Pixel has the most amount of noise at the top of the frame. The standings will be the same for the second video with the same features I just mentioned in the previous one. Normally, I'd go for the Pixel over the Galaxy, but the video is just too noisy. This is the ultra wide night video. Take a look from left to right at the back of the car and you'll see that the quality is going from good to bad. This is why the standings will not change here as well with the iPhone coming in first, Galaxy coming in second and the Pixel coming in third. The comparison of the big three was an incredible sight to behold and there was a lot of back and forth going on. In the end, the Google Pixel 7 Pro won both the wide and ultra wide photo categories as it performs very well in conditions with natural light. Portrait mode went the way of the iPhone 14 Pro but props to the Galaxy S23 Ultra for a very solid effort. Videos are of course the specialty of the iPhone, but the Galaxy is the overall winner due to an amazing 8K performance. In my opinion, currently the best on the market. Zoom is also in the pocket of the Galaxy with that 10 times periscope lens, but stabilization is all about software and that's where the iPhone comes in clutch. Samsung has historically been impressive with the front camera of their flagships and they have continued that trend, but Google has the best mic quality of them all. Slow motion goes to Samsung. Samsung, macro and autofocus are both overall ties, and the night category actually went to Samsung with a really good performance in photos. Thank you for sticking with us no matter what. If you like tech reviews and especially camera comparisons, feel free to like and subscribe to always catch our newest videos on time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.